run this fast in your car? No. So I drove the IS 500 and I've driven this 350 for quite some time now. Is the 350 worth it? So Zayna is the previous owner of an IS 200T. Is the 350 worth it? For the price and everything, it's <sighs> worth it? Uh. Everything considered. Uh, um. They're trying to copy us, the freaking Camry. All right, so I am a BMW M4 owner, 2020 F82. She is the <laughs> owner of this car here, the 2023 Lexus IS 350 F Sport, as you can see. And she is also the previous owner of the 2016 Lexus IS, IS 200 T. So we'll also be able to get, you know, her opinion on if it's worth it. We'll give you a slight version of that to the upcoming video that we're going to do about that. Real quick, starting with the exterior of the vehicle, I'm just going to give you my opinion, what I think about the vehicle, how it looks. We've had a little bit of time with it, so we know how it performs. We're going to take you on a test drive, maybe go on a little canyon run, test out the handling and everything. So walk with me for a second. As you can see, this specific model custom order came with the BBS wheels on it. That is an expensive option to get. It has the big black grill on it with the Lexus logo right there in the front. The front of this car is pretty damn sexy if I do say so myself. I've always liked the look of Lexuses, if that's the correct way to say it. I don't know, you guys can let me know in the comments. Lexus, Lexuses. They have a really dope look to them. As you guys seen the Camry a little while ago. I mean, technically, that's like a, a relative, a distant relative. You know, like the not so good looking relative that, no. like, is this person even related? That's the dupe. Yeah, the dupe. But this does have a Toyota engine in it, which is why it's so reliable, which is another thing we'll get to in a second. But back to the looks of this car. I've always liked the looks of it, even the older models. It has a different look as opposed to any other car you see on the road. As you can see, the headlights, this is one of the best features of the vehicle in my opinion. There's so many body lines and just the, the overall design is something that you don't normally see on other vehicles. And I don't know if there's any other vehicle that has this particular design because as you all know nowadays, a lot of vehicles look very similar and this is one that's pretty distinct like you know what that is when you see it when you get this car you have to be prepared for the wheel gap there is a tremendous <laughs> amount of wheel gap i could stick my whole head in there if i wanted to i'm not gonna do that right now it's like a truck yeah it's freaking it's pretty high overall this is a, a beautiful vehicle one thing i will say if you come around back with me initially i wasn't sold on the back of these models i didn't like the tron tail light just connected i don't know and i've heard a lot of people they agree with that um some people they like it but i will say over time it has grown on me i would say overall it's just a very beautiful vehicle you see it has the stock wing back here nice little black wing on it the is350 you can get it rear wheel drive or you can get it all wheel drive and as you can see this one is all wheel drive that is an option only available on the 350 i'm sure the 300 i don't know if that one has it you guys can let me know down below in the comments but i know for a fact that the all-wheel drive is not available on the 500 so if you do like all-wheel drive then you're gonna have to go for the 350. as you can see we got the chrome right here i'm not too crazy about that we do got something planned for that so stay tuned we might do a little chrome delete on that i might be doing it myself I am a rookie with the wraps. I've never done a wrap, so if you want to see how that goes, stay tuned. We might be wrapping the roof as well, but that's that's aside from what we're doing here, so we'll try to stay on topic. Aside from that, it doesn't really have a splitter in the front, 
which makes room for a nice little lip. If you want to put a lip on there, we might be doing that as well. But if you come around side, there is a slight little side skirt or at least the look of one. You see, you got some little chrome stuff right here. But overall, I mean, the exterior of this car, I do say I would give it, I give it an eight out of 10. Eight? I, get, I mean, come on now. <laughs> Are you serious? For, okay, let me say this. For the class that it's in. Because <laughs> if we're talking overall, you know, we, we're comparing it to freaking BMWs and we're comparing it to, you know, what are we comparing it to here? Mercedes? We're Just of its class. Okay, of its class. Of the honestly, Lexuses. No, no. In its class in general, all vehicles included. I would say I would put this at the top as far as looks go. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, this is a very nice vehicle out for sure. I'm not going to give it a number. Like it turns my head. Yeah, for sure. This is a head turner on the streets for sure. But overall, I mean, you see another thing we can mention with this headlight here. You see it has a little sleek design right here. It's kind of like a check mark. It go starts right here at the top, goes down, comes to a sharp point, and then flares out to the side. And it's, it's sort of like, you know, you get a little speed feature. It's an aggressive feature right there in the headlight. You see right here in the front, as we'll show you in a second, you got the camera here in the front. And don't mind all the bugs, but we're gonna watch it. <laughs> got a little late on this. I had to get this video done, so it is what it is with that. But this car does have a 360 camera. It shows you the top down view. And uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty dope, pretty dope feature. And as you can see, there is another camera right over there overall I think one thing that I would have liked is if the brake calipers you know if the brake calipers were red I don't know if that's an option or not but it is kind of good because we could do that ourselves so that's another thing to look forward to we got the black brake calipers there and then here in the back you got the silver ones <laughs> I mean why not just make them black as well why you gotta what's going on here Lexus, come on, <laughs> what are we doing? I think they're just trying to make it like a vibe because it gives like a black and then there's like chrome and... Let me tell you something, it's not a vibe. Oh. Come around back. <laughs> you see right here, I know we're going around, we're like just pointing things out as we go, but uh, you see we got the slight diffuser here, you know, with the little accents in it. You know, you don't usually get that in every car. So that's a nice touch. I do like that. But you got the dual exhaust and we'll show you what that sounds like. Actually, let's show you what that sounds like right now. So we got a few different sound modes, if you will. We'll show you the less aggressive one and then we'll head into the more aggressive one. Let's go make mama proud. And if you guys on. aren't aware, this is a V6 engine, <laughs> naturally aspirated. I know it's a feature. It's something that a lot of people are attracted to because a lot of cars nowadays are turbo or they're going into the hybrid electric thing. And, uh, you know, V6s, V8s, naturally aspirated engines like this, they're on the way out, you know. So it's a rare thing nowadays and uh, it's the last of a dying breed. That is the eco mode. We're going to skip the regular and the sport. Let's go right into sport club. I need to go get a different car. She. Right, so it doesn't sound too bad, you know? It we sounded could, the same. Did it? I mean, no. The other one sounded more like not this, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I just it's, need to get a sports car. Let's switch it. I mean, we could make that sound a lot better, so stay tuned. All you got to do is remove a couple things, you know, you'll be sounding all right. Before we get to the interior of the car, let's go around front and show you what's under the hood. Nice clean sleek you see everything's where it needs to be nothing to complain about in there nothing too special and if we go around back well we're not going to show you what's in the trunk because there might be a couple bodies in there you never know but just know there's a lot of space there's a lot of space so come on right around over here 
right around over here we'll show you the interior of the vehicle you see we got the f sport right here nice little feature we got the red on the side and we got this the speaker it kind of looks like a, a beats by dre speaker it does have a pretty good sound system the steering wheel you see you got the red stitching here on the steering wheel something my guy and forgive me I cannot think of his name right now, I'm sorry, but everyone was loving him in the video where uh, we went and test drove the IS500. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. He let me go pretty crazy in that car. Um, so for anybody who decides to purchase that car, I'm sorry. I did disrespect your vehicle a little bit. Definitely wouldn't be something that I would have done in my vehicle at that stage in its lifespan, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do for the content. So anyways, the people were loving him in that video got a lot of good feedback but one thing he did let me know of is the steering wheel is the only leather the only real leather in this vehicle <gasps> that is Wait, a so fact. what's the other leather i don't know it's not leather but i will tell you it did have me fooled because it's nice and soft it looks good and if you come closer you can see you got the red stitching so i'm not mad i'm not mad at it it's not real leather but it feels nice it's not cheap and plasticky and one thing a lot of people say about the interior of this car, people aren't too crazy about it. Just because they say it's a little outdated, they haven't switched it up. You know, let's flip the camera around on the owner. How do you feel? Because you previously owned a <laughs> Lexus IS 200T 2016. So how do you feel upgrading from that interior to this interior? Do you feel it's outdated? Well, it's the same as my other one. So it's outdated. Like it's literally the same, this like fully the same. This one has seat coolers, seat warmers. So is there any, are you impressed or are you not impressed? I mean, I like that. It's like, I mean. Do you um, feel it was an upgrade? Or do you feel like you're kind of in the new same car, but with a different steering wheel and like a different color? The what? only thing that's different is this thing and the screen. So like I would say the screen and the panel does make a difference. That's the nice. screen, the screen sure yeah, the screen difference. is pretty pretty damn big. Everything else is the same. So you would, you would agree it's pretty I outdated. Like it though. You like I it? I like that it's simple. I like that I know what every button means and it's simple. There's not too much touch. If I want touch features, I just touch the screen, but like Yeah, I like that too. I just like that it's simple. And that is something that I was going to agree with. Yes. It is a bit outdated, but you have everything you need. Like, I'm not mad at this. I never had a Lexus before, but I did use her Lexus for quite some time in between selling the Scat Pack and getting the M4. I do appreciate you for that, baby. <laughs> so if you guys were wondering whose Lexus that was, I drove around in a couple of those videos. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy was carless. <laughs> no, he's never carless because he has my car. Where do, you, where do you find these nowadays? You know, I've, I've been blessed. But yeah, I mean, I like it. I like the steering wheel personally more than the steering wheel in the M4. This is just a nice steering wheel. They got the stitching on it. It looks nice and sporty. You yeah. know, the one in the M4, if we're comparing it to that, because that's what I have, it's a little bit plain, you know, compared to this. You got the paddle shifters here in a nice, looks kind of like a hyper silver. I like that color. You got the stitching here on the gear shifter right here you got the gloss black here that's the only thing that i would say yeah and that's something that pretty much every vehicle has nowadays and i don't prefer it just because as you can see like it gets Dusty. fingerprints everywhere it shows the wear very easily very easy to scratch i don't mind it too much in this car though i will say that it gives it a good little like pop yeah it gives it a good little pop in here you guys can see what the interior looks like a lot of people hate on it but i mean i'm not i'm not mad at it there's a good amount of room i've been in the back i'm six foot i had a good enough amount of leg room and everything i wasn't mad with all that being said before the sun goes down let's go on a little ride all right and as you can see you can automatically set your seat to however you prefer you got one two and three. Oh, look at the nice little graphics Sheesh. Right. So, one feature that this car does have, and I've mentioned this before in previous videos, I'm sure everyone is aware by now, but 
you know if you're seeing this for the first time this is your first review it has a feature where you can actually hear the engine from the inside louder or quieter just by turning this little knob here so we'll uh, play with that feature with all that being said let's see how this thing drives and we're gonna go right into sport plus i'm not the type of person that really likes to play around too much in eco mode like i said zayna's had this car for quite some time now so she'll be able to let you know the full experience with it so far so you can see we switch it up here so right now it gets 21 miles per gallon and would you say that's a little bit of city a little bit of highway yeah it's a little bit of everything because before coming from the 200 t you know do you do you feel like you're at the gas station more often now but yeah, you're in a v6 now you know that was a and i drive more for work whereas before i like didn't drive that much how long have you had this car um, since the end of april you've had the car for about four months now she's put 10,000 miles 9,500 almost 10,000 miles yeah. coming up to a big milestone already sheesh she uses what she buys so she'll be able to let you guys know her full experience with the car so far we've had a lot of seat time so that's a good thing i love it there you go i'm pretty sure i'd have a lexus all my life i'd have it as a daily and it sounds good it honestly sounds really good from in here actually let me go straight fuel is low well we'll there you go the speaking of fuel I notice in a lot of the review videos I see, people don't really drive the car. Well, they don't really test it out. I like to test it out. I don't really go in the eco mode and all that. She could tell you, you drive in eco mode, right? Yeah, I I have never turned it to the Sport Plus, but myself, unless Louis in here, he's doing it. And then if I wanted to like show my sister or like my oh, dad, this car got a little like, power like it to has it. some power to it. Yeah. That's so, but I you mean. feel like it has enough power in eco mode? Yeah. It has a lot of, it has enough get up. I, I, sometimes I'm on the phone with her, I hear the engine, I'm like, Zay, relax. No, you know, she's just loud. She's just loud, huh? Yeah. But yeah, this car, this car has enough get up. It's not the V8 in the 500, but I did drive the 500. And if you want to hear my review on that, the comparison and everything, go check that video out. I will be doing a dedicated video to the comparison of the 350 and the 500 very soon. So stay tuned for that. That will be dropping within the next few videos that I upload. All right, so y'all get to see from empty to full. There it is. And this has a pretty big tank. So eighty dollars. How long? How long will a full tank usually last you? And you driving all the time. A week. A week? Mm -hmm. oh, that's that's actually not bad because she drives all literally every day. I would say you at least drive like sixty miles a day at least, right? Uh, depends like when on you go to slow and stuff. Yeah. Because that's 30 my, miles there, 30 miles back. Yeah, it just depends on my day. And I just, yeah, drive down. So I'd say on average, probably at least 40 miles a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. So let's test the, let's test the paddle shifters. With the little bit of sunlight we got left. I want to learn. Oh, you still got to teach you? responsive uh, I wouldn't say they're the most responsive let's see yeah I don't know I haven't drove the scat in a while that's the only thing I really have to compare it to I did use the paddle shifters in a c7 before and those those weren't the best, honestly, but you know, they're responsive enough. Obviously it's not like a DCT or anything like that, but definitely responsive enough. And I will say the handling on this car and the overall like driving experience, this car is super smooth. Literally, it's just like you're floating. Like you don't feel any of the bumps. That's a lot to say for the suspension and everything on this car. The handling is crisp, as you can see. Here, go on the 
finish faster in your car? No! We're in Mexico, what you mean? But we're in Mexico! Yeah, I mean, this car can get up there. It's not the fastest car in the world, but it definitely has some balls to it. The stopping power, pretty damn good. Can't complain whatsoever. Throw it back into automatic. Honestly, I feel like I could do better shifting it myself than in automatic. Let's see. Let's test that theory. Let's do a little dig. We got all-wheel drive here. Let's see what the 0 to 60 is like. I feel like it's kind of slow. to go yeah. more but it's like restricted a yes. little it, yeah i've always felt that i felt that with my other car and this one remember when i first drove it i said i feel like something's like yeah. not letting me hit the gas like right yeah i don't know if there's like governors on this car but or... i also think that the car's just not meant to be driven in that type you know it's not a sports car uh it's not a sports car. I mean, like, the RC is more definitely more of a sports car, but this thing can handle, like... Yeah, it has good... Um, the wheel is good. Yeah, it's no slouch when it comes to the handling at all. The steering is very it's good. It's nice and crisp, very responsive. I know a road, and I'm going to take Louie to it, and he's gonna, he's never been there. I'm pretty sure he hasn't been there, and it'll be, like, a surprise. And he wow. has to kind of... He has In to, this car? Yeah. No, you could take your car if you want. It's he boring. would love it. Like it's like a lot of like. Loops. Now, if we're talking about the M4, that's a totally different beast. Like it's made for that type of stuff, you know. Yeah. But honestly, like I drive the M4 all the time. I know what the handling's like in there. That thing is top notch. This thing is no slouch though. basically out here on the streets yeah. you're gonna have everything you need the main thing it might not be the fastest car but this is definitely one of the best all-around driving experiences just as far as like you have the nice sound and just the smoothness of the ride like the comfortability factor is top-notch and know? I love like the seating the super comfortable yeah like I literally feel like I was made for yeah, like, there's so much room in here, very spacious. You can put a lot of stuff in here. When you go to the grocery store, you got plenty of space. You know, I, like I said, I'm six foot. I never felt any sort of discomfort in here. I've been in the back as well, and I've had plenty of space. So overall, I can't complain about this car. This is a very dope car overall, super reliable, and that's the main thing as well. 100. You get all of you know the performance the luxury aspects of it the look of it and the reliability is something that is pretty much unbeatable not just in its class but like you're not beating lexus reliability unless you go to toyota and that's like the same thing basically you know what i'm saying so it's up there with the reliability of the best cars so when it comes to that it's like it's hard to beat it's more reliable than that of course, I mean the higher you go in performance, the less reliable you're gonna be. Yeah, I guess. But I feel like this, this is like tiptoeing on being high up in that performance, but still having that reliability. It's right there on that line, and it's perfect in the spot 
you know where it's at and like i said i had my other car for almost six years yeah a hundred thousand plus miles a hundred thousand plus miles and i had zero problems zero yeah yeah like, that's one thing that all people who have experienced a lexus can agree on is the they hold their value because they're so reliable yeah. The resale value on these cars is tremendous. It's my next down payment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like overall, hard to beat this car. If you're looking for, you know, a vehicle in this price range, you want to know the full, you know, price and everything of this specific one, go back and check that video out. We dropped the video on that. We dropped the whole process of purchasing this vehicle as well. So go check that video out. But hard to go wrong with the Lexus. If you're in search of a Lexus, I have really no i can't say nothing bad about it aside from what you said about it feeling a little choked up when you're hitting the gas yeah so if speed is what you're looking for i do have the comparison video with this and the is 500 coming very very soon and also we're going to be doing a review on the rc 350 so oh, stay wow, tuned really? for that you know a lot of people have been uh talking about the rc for the coupe people out there so you know a little bit a little bit more performance with that uh, so that should be very fun, but yeah, man. So I drove the IS 500 and I've driven this 350 for quite some time now. Is the 350 worth it? Honestly, you're going to have to wait for the official comparison video between the 500 and the 350 for my full answer on that. But I will say you really can't go wrong with this car. It's a hell of a car. So Zayna is the previous owner of an IS 200T. She had that car for quite some time. She went over 100,000 miles on it before we traded it in for this, or she traded it in for this. What would you say, baby? What is the 350 worth it? Do you think the 350 is worth it? You've had it for about four or five months now. Put 10,000 miles on it, damn near. Is the 350 worth it? Let the people know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would say so. For the price and everything, it's <sighs> worth it? Uh. Everything considered. Uh, um, it's a hefty car payment, honestly, for for um being this car. Like, when you say that this car is basically very close in price to your car, like, that well, makes me... Well, my car used. Yeah, but it makes me feel like, oh, I could have gotten, like, a sportier car. But it's like, what's your objective? My objective at this time in my life wasn't to really have a sporty car. Um, reliability I, is what you get. when the, You get a little bit of everything, but most of all, you get reliability. Yeah, and I knew that if I got... Because I literally got the same exact... Like, I remember when you said that, like, you got the same exact car, just new <laughs> and it was a little bigger engine type thing so then i was like oh my god should i have done that like i was like thinking that in my head like should i have it's gone with like. something totally different but we did we went to bmw yeah, i have experience with audis mercedes and audi is it, you no know, offense to the audi owners but yeah don't, don't do it. just a lot of problems um i have experience with those cars but Honestly, nothing compares to Lexus. I just can't. I'm such a Lexus girl now. It's all, crazy. All around, me personally, this car, it's not missing anything. Yes, the power isn't all the way there, but it far, far makes up for it with the reliability, with the overall quality of the vehicle. Yes, the interior is a bit outdated, but it's not bad interior whatsoever. The screen is huge. The steering wheel is really nice. It's super nice in here, you know? I can't complain. Like, I don't need everything all digital. I don't even really like everything all digital. Once the digital thing messes up, then think of how much money that is. And like I said, back to the reliability. Reliability. That's what you're getting. Yeah, I everything. would say... I would say it's worth it. Like, I would have this car for... You could have this car for freaking a long time. And it's just awesome that when you buy a Lexus, you know that you're not going to have to have, like, a lump sum of money for your next down payment. Like, it's always your next down payment. That's how I think about it. I was like, oh, well, I could pay off this car in three to five years, and then basically my next car, this is my down payment. Because the other car, I wasn't thinking I was going to get 17000 for it from the dealer. Yeah, like, from the dealer. That's not something I thought was going to happen. I don't trade in cars because I know you could get a lot more value selling it yourself. Yes, 
you save taxes when you trade in the car you save on taxes but when you sell the car for a good amount more than you would have got it still makes sense to usually sell it yourself which is what i've done in the past but i knew the value of the old car that she had and you guys could go check out the whole process of when we traded it in for this one i knew the value of it once we were able to get them to give us but they gave us 17 for it mm -hmm. and then yeah. another and, I, thing and that was like i was thinking about getting 19 for it you know selling it so once they said 17 i'm like Pff. all right all right all right that's a freaking we'll take it and another thing too um my other car was a 2016 and those rims were you know they made out with the curbs <laughs> plenty of times yeah. so. not just me but like anybody like my sisters drove my car like you know things happen this i'm like super careful i have not you knock better on be some, at them bbs's knock on some wood <laughs> because no really like i've been very careful yeah. i feel with this car and i'm trying my best like with that i i drove that car a lot a lot a lot a lot yeah, so I would say it's worth it. Every time I get in my car, I'm excited to drive it. There you go. Like I'm excited to go to work in it. I'm excited to go to lose. And if you can experience, and if you could say that about the car that you got, then it is worth it for you. As long as you ain't living outside of your means. Yeah. And as long as, because we say reliability when it comes to this, but that doesn't mean that you could just treat it like shit and it's gonna last the the test of time you know what i'm saying yeah. you do have to keep up on the maintenance and i did that yeah and as long as you do that you're solid